and here is a standard radio image of it. Although it's a lot brighter, a lot of the detail has been lost. Now compare it with one of the new high definition images, which is much sharper. The night sky. It looks so quiet, so intimate, doesn't it? Just a velvet curtain sprinkled with pinpricks of light. Until you really think about it. Until you realize every single one of those pinpricks isn't just a star, but often a star factory, an entire galaxy, perhaps even the size of a million Earths. And that's just our cosmic front porch, really. Last week, or rather over the past year and a half since it started delivering its first major data sets, the James Webb Space Telescope has been relentlessly dropping fresh batches of raw images and mind-blowing observations. And with each one, that quiet, intimate view of the cosmos, it's been absolutely shattered. We now count 10 times more distant galaxies than every textbook predicted, stretching so far into the past that the light we're seeing left them before our own sun even sparked to life. If that doesn't make your sense of scale stutter, if your brain isn't already a little bit overwhelmed, then stick around because by the end of this journey, your internal cosmic map is going to need a serious upgrade. All right, let's park the hype for just a second, though it's hard when we're talking about web. Web isn't magic, not really. It's cold, it's precise, it's an absolute marvel of engineering. This incredible machine is parked a million miles away from Earth, tirelessly folding sunlight into its incredibly sensitive infrared sensors. Sensors so finely tuned, they could pick up the warmth of a bumblebee on the moon. Think about that for a moment. A bumblebee on the moon. That kind of sensitivity isn't just a cool party trick. It matters profoundly because the farther light travels across our ever-expanding universe, the more that light gets stretched out. It shifts into redder, colder wavelengths, a phenomenon we call redshift. Hubble, for all its groundbreaking work, could only blush at those extreme depths, struggling to see that ancient red-shifted light. But Webb? Webb lives there. It was designed precisely to capture this ancient reddened light, peering through the cosmic dust that obscured Hubble's view. So when researchers first unpacked the incredible data from Webb's deepest surveys, like the monumental Cosmos Webb Field, the largest observing program awarded to JWST in its first year, dedicating over 250 hours to meticulously scanning a patch of sky about three times the area of our full moon, they expected to find a handful, maybe a few dozen of infant galaxies. Instead, what they got was a cosmic rainforest, a sprawling metropolis of early galaxies, nearly 800,000 fresh candidates in just one survey patch alone, a tiny fraction of the whole sky. This wasn't merely adding to the picture, it was redrawing the boundaries entirely. To put the leak in perspective, if the famous Hubble Ultra Deep Field were printed on a standard sheet of paper, the new JWST map from Cosmos Web at the same resolution would be a mural stretching over 13 feet on each side. It is a recontextualization of our place in the universe, as profound as seeing our entire planet for the first time after only ever knowing a single city. To truly grasp the monumental nature of what Webb has revealed, we need to calibrate our brains, to start local. Think about this. One light second. That's the time it takes light to span the Earth-Moon gap, about the width of your thumb held at arm's length. That's our immediate neighborhood. Leave that behind and you hit Mars in about four minutes of light time. Jupiter, 40 minutes. The Quipper Cliff, that icy boundary beyond Neptune, takes about five hours. We're still just in the cosmic driveway, barely off the front porch. Webb's infrared eyes, designed for the truly ancient and distant, don't even bother with this neighborhood, unless there's a rogue comet photobombing Mashat. Zoom outward, and our home galaxy, the Milky Way, blooms into a breathtaking 100,000 light year swirl of some 200 billion stars. Webb can't map every single one, of course, but it has resolved the galactic core with such astonishing clarity that the supermassive black hole's accretion flow, that swirling maelstrom of gas and dust feeding the cosmic monster, looks like a slow-motion campfire. 
Around it, new images reveal thousands of ancient metal poor stars. These aren't just pretty lights, they're cosmic fossils, the earliest stars that formed before much of the universe's heavier elements existed. They are the essential fuel for understanding how those elements, the very stuff that makes up planets and us, were brewed in the universe's early furnaces long before Earth even existed. Pause here for a moment. If our entire solar system were a single coffee bean, then the Milky Way galaxy would stretch across the entirety of North America. We're still incredibly provincial in our cosmic understanding, aren't we? Step past the Milky Way, venturing out into our immediate galactic neighborhood, and you'll soon meet Andromeda. It's twice our star count, a truly colossal spiral, and it's on a collision course with us. Don't worry too much, though. It's still four billion years away. Cosmically speaking, that's practically tomorrow. Webb's wide-field lenses have already caught star streams, almost like cosmic spaghetti, leaking between our two galaxies, pulled by their mutual gravity. Add in the Triangulum Galaxy and a few dozen smaller dwarf galaxies, and you've got what astronomers call the local group. It's roughly 10 million light years across. To put that distance into perspective, it's like circling Earth 250 trillion times. That's cute, it's impressive, but we're still barely in the cosmic countryside. Now, let's string a few thousand groups like ours together, and you start to get something truly immense. Superclusters. Ancient ocean-going explorers used constellations to navigate. Astronomers, when looking at these vast structures, use redshift, that stretching of light we talked about earlier, to map their distances and movements. Webb's incredibly precise spectra show that the Virgo superclusters' immense mass bends space so deeply that light detours around it, almost like cars avoiding a traffic jam on a cosmic highway. Hidden behind those gravitational lanes, the telescope has found a new population of ultra-diffuse, almost ethereal, ghost galaxies. These are so incredibly spread out, so sparsely populated with stars, that you could fit two entire Milky Ways inside them and barely even notice their stars. They're practically invisible to older telescopes. These ghost galaxies hint that gravity sculpts far more intricate and unexpected shapes in the universe than our previous models ever predicted. It's a profound puzzle, suggesting that the universe's architecture is even more complex and beautiful than we imagined. Now, this is Webb's absolute sweet spot. This is where it was designed to truly shine. Look back 13 billion years, just 330 million years after the Big Bang, and you land squarely in the epoch astronomers call Cosmic Dawn. This is the era when the very first stars and galaxies were thought to be forming, a time shrouded in mystery. And here, Webb delivered its knockout punch. Before JWST, our best models predicted that we would find very few bright galaxies in this primordial epoch. The universe, it was thought, needed more time for gravity to gather matter and ignite those first stars. But in field after field, Webb spotted fully formed rotating galaxies shining through the hydrogen fog that theorists thought would smother their light. The record for the most distant galaxy has been broken again and again. First came the confirmation of Jade's GS Z13O, a stunningly bright galaxy, seen as it was just 330 million years after the universe began, a poster child for early cosmic maturity. More recently, another was confirmed at an even greater distance, Glass Z12, existing a mere 350 million years after the universe began. These aren't the small primitive proto-galaxies our theories predicted. They are already luminous systems, and more shockingly, they contain heavier elements like carbon and nitrogen. This isn't trivial. This suggests that at least one generation of stars had already been born, lived, and died within the first few hundred million years of cosmic history, a timeline that is almost impossibly fast, and one that challenges the very foundations of our cosmic models. It's a cosmic baby boom that existing physics struggles to explain, forcing astronomers back to the drawing board. And it's not just the earliest galaxies that are surprising us. 
as we journey slightly forward in time to an era astronomers call Cosmic Noon, about 10 billion years ago when the universe was in its most prolific phase of star formation, Webb is still delivering unexpected finds. It has discovered quenched galaxies, galaxies that have already stopped forming stars, snoozing in an era when they should have been at their most active. Even more mind-boggling, it's revealed remarkably structured spiral galaxies with well-defined arms just a few billion years after the Big Bang, structures that theory suggested should take much longer to form. These discoveries imply the processes of galactic evolution were happening far more rapidly and perhaps differently than previously believed. Within this very field, astronomers found a remarkable object nicknamed the Infinity Galaxy two galaxies colliding in a way that formed a figure eight. Extraordinarily, a supermassive black hole appears to be forming not in the center of either galaxy, but right in between them, a discovery that hints at a mechanism of black hole formation never witnessed before. This is precisely the kind of rare fleeting event that can only be found when surveying a vast volume of space, demonstrating the richness of the cosmos web data. Even stranger, many of those infant galaxies Webb is spotting in the early universe seem to spin in the same direction, clockwise if you view them pole on. Statistically, you'd expect random twirls, a complete mishmash of directions, like flipping a million fair coins and landing 70% heads. It just doesn't make sense on the surface. Astronomers aren't invoking cosmic coin flip fraud yet, thankfully. But the pattern is strong enough that some papers are starting to whisper about large-scale primordial magnetic fields that might have influenced the very fabric of the early cosmos, or maybe even a rotating universe itself. Either way, your cosmic compass just wobbled, big time. It's another profound puzzle that demands new explanations. Remember when astronomers claimed two trillion galaxies in the observable universe, a mind-boggling number that seemed almost impossible to grasp? Well, Webb's wider, deeper census, especially through projects like Cosmos Webb, revises that up, way up. Early number crunching suggests 10 trillion, maybe even more. Think of it, for every single human alive today on Earth, the cosmos hosts an entire galaxy, each averaging 100 billion stars. If intelligent life emerges just once per galaxy, that's 10 trillion chances for someone else out there to be wondering about you right now. It's a recontextualization of our place in the universe as profound as seeing our entire planet for the first time after only ever knowing a single city.